Would you like to learn how to make the most mouth-watering cherry glazed baked ham just like this? Well, in this episode of the Lisa D. Delight Show, I'm going to show you how to make a bomb.com cherry glazed baked ham. We're going to use some delicious cherry preserves, some honey, and some other yumminess. You make your cherry glazed baked ham like this, your Thanksgiving dinner is about to be turned. Lisa D. Delight. I got noises in my stomach, so I guess I'm feeling hungry. I click that YouTube Lisa D so I can kill this rumbling. But when I'm in the kitchen, don't know what I'm doing, stumbling. It's time I try to. You're going to need a ham. I have an eight pound fully cooked spiral ham and it actually comes with its own little seasoning packet. But in my house, that's a no-no. We consider that trash. I'm going to show you how to make a way better, super yummy glaze for your ham. Start by preheating your oven to 325, then tightly cover the ham with aluminum foil. Like I said, the ham is already cooked, so the only thing that we have to do is bring it up to a recommended temperature and make it taste super yummy. The safe recommended temperature is 135 degrees, but because all ovens are different and because spiral hams are easy to dry out and overcook because they're sliced already, I recommend using a, full, um, a meat thermometer so that you can be sure that you don't overcook your ham. So this honey ham recipe is one that I personally created, but what inspired me to create it is the ingredients that I saw Gordon Ramsay use in his ham recipe. My recipe is totally different from his, but the type of brown sugar that I saw him use, it looked interesting to me. So I researched it and then I purchased it and I tried it in my ham. And ever since then, this is the only brown sugar that I use when I make my hams. It's actually a quality brown sugar made from 100% natural cane juice. Unlike regular brown sugar, which adds artificial color to make it brown, Demerara sugar, and child, don't get me to line, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. I think it's pronounced Demerara sugar. It's a less processed sugar than um, other sugar. So, it retains a little bit more of the vitamins than you know other sugars and it actually looks like little gold crystals so i really like it it makes the like if you can't find it or because i got it from amazon um if you can't find it it's perfectly fine to use regular brown sugar i just found that i like the flavor just it just heightens the dish to me and makes it taste a little better but regular brown sugar will work fine too girl this other ingredient is cherry preserves I get it from Trader Joe's. It's really yummy. This one is the reduced sugar. I got that one because of the Demerara sugar that I'm using and the um, honey and the honey mustard. I didn't want it to be overly sweet. So this came out to be perfect, the perfect flavoring. Hopefully you can find it at Trader Joe's, but if you can't, you can just use, you know, a regular cherry preserve jelly type thing I'm a jiggy and that's a Lisa D thing not Gordon Ramsay he's not the only top chef around these here ports okay. <laughs> all right y'all let's put the ham in the oven now you want to bake your ham for about 10 minutes per pound so I have an eight pound ham and it took me about an hour and 15 minutes or so to bake mine so it depends on the size of your ham Lisa D delight so we'll let it heat up a bit first and then we'll baste it when it reaches about 110. In the meantime, let's make our cherry goody goody glaze. Put three tablespoons of butter into a frying pan on medium low heat. Once the butter has melted down nicely, add in one cup of Demerara sugar or a regular old brown sugar. Whatever you got, child. I was just trying to help out your palate. Mix that up well for a couple of minutes. Let the butter get all up into the brown sugar and then go in with one cup of the cherry preserves. Stir, stir, stir. Are you guys cooking this year for Thanksgiving? I can't believe it's that time already. Time is just flying by, oh my God. Let me know in the comments if you're cooking this year or not. If you are cooking this year for Thanksgiving, you really need to bless your life and bless your family with my collard greens recipe. It is super yummy. 
I'll put the recipe above. You're welcome. While you're making this glaze, you just want to be sure that you're constantly stirring and mixing it. And then go in with a quarter cup of Marsala wine. If you don't have Marsala wine, you can use any kind of wine, white, red, any kind of wine, but I like Marsala. And no, you won't get drunk. Shut your face. The alcohol cooks off. But if you wanna be wimpish, you can just leave it out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're not a wimp. If you leave it out, it'll still be good. Just use chicken broth instead. But as usual, your shopping list and measurements and such will be in the description box below. Next, add in a quarter cup of honey. Stir, 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 stir what your mama gave ya. Then add in one tablespoon of honey mustard. Mix that well and then go in with two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. If you can't find pumpkin pie spice or you don't have it, you can just use a little allspice and a little cinnamon. Stir that really well and then go in with a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. But be careful with the ground cloves because if you put too much, it can overpower the whole dish. Next, add in a little orange zest. Be sure only to get the skin of the orange and not the white part because the white part is bitter. Orange zest just brightens up the dish with that yummy citrus zing. It's yummy, it's delicious, try it. That lemon, orange, zest or whatever gets on my nerves because the stuff just sticks to the back of the plane. I got it from Walmart, I hate it, but later I found a better one at Pampers Chef. I love it. I'll put the link to that one in the description box for you guys. Let the glaze simmer for a few minutes and as it simmers, it will thicken up. Let it come to a mild boil, but keep stirring as it thickens. After about an hour and 15 minutes, the ham is almost done. She's ready to be basted right now. But let me just show you what she looks like real quick. She's so pretty. But wait till she gets glazed, then she's really gonna be pretty. I just want to take her temp real quick, make sure she's ready to be glazed. She's at 110. Yes, and she's ready for the goody goody. Here comes the basting. You just want to make sure you go in between. Try to get each layer and put some glaze under each layer. Try to get um, every nook and cranny. Try to put that yummy cherry goodness in every crease and every crevice. Hams need to be moisturized too. <laughs> Child, would you believe it's only 18 days till Thanksgiving? Whew. I'm about to start me a GoFundMe just for my cheeses, for my mac and cheese. Because <laughs> I put 5411 cheeses up in my mac and cheese. And child, I like to use the quality cheeses. So it cost me a couple of coins. But it's so worth it because it's so good. And you so need to check out that recipe above. You're welcome. So I glazed and baste her up real good. And then I put her back in the oven for 10 minutes and then pulled her back out. And I'm rebasting her one more time, actually two more times. Because after this basting, she went back in the oven again for another 10 minutes. Then I took her out again and I rebasted her one more time basted her a total of three times and then after that she was done yes god check girlfriend out isn't she gorgeous you know we gotta hit her up one more time with the goodness anyway here's a pro tip you always want to let your meat rest after you cook it because if you cut into it right away all the juices will just come out of the meat so you want to let it rest so the juices can redistribute themselves. So we're gonna cover this back up with a tent of aluminum foil and allow it to rest for about 30 minutes. But before we do that, let's baste her bottom up real good too. Bottoms need love too. Oh my God, you a mess. I wanna give a shout out to another one of my favorite channels, Shirley's Real Life. 
Shelly has an amazing channel. She does thrifting and coin stuffing and all kinds of fun stuff over there. Please go check out Shirley's channel. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. Her link will be in my description and pinned in my comments. And if you too would like a shout out, simply tell me how many times I said the word ham in this video and I'll give you a shout out in my next one. Once Miss Mamas is done resting, she will look like Miss this. OMG. Somebody come look at this. Well, he do it. Thank you to my Lord and Savior for always blessing me and the LDD family. Father, we thank you for your love, your provision, your protection, and for allowing us to see another holiday. This ham really came out super yummy, and it was moist and juicy too. Let me show you. I love ham anyway. I really need to get off pork, but I'll start Monday. Never rubby 30 seconds. Look how delicious. Child, I'm telling you, make your cherry glaze ham like this. You make your ham like this, and your Thanksgivings will never be the same. Honey baked ham store, who? Then all you have to do is make the mac and cheese I showed you how to make, and the collard greens. Oh yeah, and you need some candy yams. Here you go. You're welcome. And the only thing left you have to do is make my bomb.com black eyed peas. And you'll be straight for the holidays. Oh wait, I tried it. If you're gonna do a soul food Thanksgiving the right way, you gotta have some barbecue spare ribs. Get into that yumminess above. Okay, now you're ready. Don't say I ain't never prepared you for these here holidays. That's also what I call some good soul food Sunday eating. My LDD family, thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a blessed and prosperous Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. And remember, when you cook from your heart with love, you can't go wrong. Have a delicious and delightful day. Bye.